Okay, so let's talk about separating mixtures. In particular, I want you to think about this, okay? Let's say you have a glass of water and you add sugar or salt to it and stir it around. That stuff's gonna dissolve and then you have a mixture of, say, water and salt. Now I wanna separate that. I wanna separate out the water and the salt so that I can have the glass of just water in one hand and I can have the original salt that I started with in the other. How can we do that? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Okay, so let's go back to this example. I have this glass of water and I pour salt into it and then I stir it around. Eventually, as that salt dissolves, it's gonna look like it disappears in the water. But it doesn't really disappear. It's still there. The atoms that make up that salt are still in the water. We just can't see them anymore. Let's do this. Let's pretend that we can take this glass of water and we can zoom in zillions and zillions of times to look at the atoms and molecules that make up this water and salt mixture. Then we'll be able to see the salt and then we'll be able to talk about how we can separate out this mixture. Okay, so this is what we'd see in our zillion and zillion time magnified glass of water. There are a couple things we see in here. One of the things we see is the water molecules. And there's one oxygen connected to two hydrogen atoms. So that's what all these are. There are other things in here too, this orange and, uh, and blue circles, which represent the sodium and chloride atoms, which make up the table salt that's dissolved in here. So what's really happened when this table salt dissolved is that these two atoms came apart and they're now surrounded by the water molecules. Okay, so we said that what we want to do is try to separate the salt from the water. Here is one thing that we can do. We can take this guy, this glass of water, and we can put it out in the sun. And through the process of evaporation, these water molecules will slowly turn in to gas. And they'll float away from the glass of water the liquid turns to gas as these molecules float out. You've seen this happen plenty of times on your own. If you leave a glass of water out in the sun or even just like in your kitchen overnight, the water level goes way down because the liquid water turned into gas water and it just floated away. So here's eventually what's going to happen if we keep this in the sun for like a whole day. Okay, and now all the water molecules have escaped into the air as gas, and the atoms that make up the salt, the sodium and chloride, are left at the bottom of the glass. Now, evaporation works to separate the water from the salt, because water is able to evaporate. Liquid water is able to turn into a gas at a reasonably low temperature, like temperatures that we experience every day, like in the sun. On the other hand, Salt, and also things like sugar, other stuff that you tend to dissolve in water, only evaporates at insanely, insanely high temperatures. So it has to be thousands and thousands and thousands of degrees for salt atoms to turn into gas salt atoms. It never happens. Sugar, we don't have gas sugar a whole lot. So it's nothing we have to worry about. And this means that at relatively low temperatures, the water molecules will turn into gas while the salt that can't evaporate at low temperatures stays behind in the glass. I think you've seen stuff like this happen before. If you just leave um, like a glass of soda out for a couple days, all the water evaporates and you're left with crusty stuff on the bottom of the glass. That's all the stuff like the sugar and the flavoring and the coloring, all those molecules that can evaporate, they can vaporize, and they stay crusty kind of on the bottom of the glass. So that is an example of being able to separate a mixture by evaporation. Here's a problem with this. Let's say that for one reason or another we wanted not just to have the salt at the end, but we also wanted to hold on to the water that was part of this mixture. With evaporation, the water turns into a gas that floats away, so it's, it's no use to us anymore, right? We, we, we can't hold on to it. On the other hand, we are able to keep both the water and the salt 
if we use a process called distillation. Here's what distillation looks like. Okay, so distillation is something that we do in the lab, and we'd have to have some specialized glassware for it. In our distillation setup here, we have a few things. We have a big flask, this would be a big glass flask, and it's got this long tube on it, and the tube has an outlet at the end, and we put that over a beaker. This here represents a thermometer. Sometimes we'll put a thermometer at the top of our distillation flask. So I have this mixture, salt and water, that I want to separate. The first thing that I do is I open up this flask and I pour in the mixture. So here you can see it, just as we did before with the evaporation, we can see that there are water molecules in here and there are also the atoms, sodium and chloride, that make up the salt. Here's how we do distillation. The first thing that I want to do is heat up this flask. So underneath it, I'll put like a Bunsen burner or a hot plate, something that's going to heat it up. As it heats up, the kinetic energy of these atoms and molecules that are in the mixture is going to increase and they're going to start moving around. This means that eventually these water molecules are going to be moving fast enough that they can pull away from the other atoms and molecules in the solution and they can become a gas. So here they are. A whole bunch of these water molecules come out as this thing starts to boil and they make steam. This steam is going to rise up because it's hot up into the top of the flask and then it's going to start going through this tube. So we've got these water molecules now going through this tube. Now this tube is called the condenser and it's cold. There are a couple ways to make it cold. Sometimes people run uh, pipes with cold water around the outside of it. It doesn't really matter how you make it cold, but what's important is that it is cold. And so we have this hot steam, this hot water gas, coming out here and entering the condenser. And this steam is going to turn into liquid water as it moves through the condenser and cools down. So now, towards the middle of the condenser, what used to be steam is going to become water. And the water, when it gets to the end of the condenser, drips out into the beaker that we have here. So this is how we keep the water and we separate it from the salt atoms. Now the same thing happens with distillation as had with evaporation. The temperature that we're using here to boil off the water molecules is way, way, way lower than the temperature at which these salt atoms would become gas. So in other words, the water will become gas and it will float away and then it will enter the condenser and drip into the beaker, but the salt won't because it's not hot enough for that to happen. So here is what will eventually happen if we boil this water long enough. All of it will become steam, it will condense in the condenser and then it will drip out here into the beaker. Here's what will happen. Okay, and so when my distillation is through, I'm going to have all my water condensed as liquid water here. It's dripped out of the condenser into the beaker. And then I'm going to have the atoms of sodium and chloride over here on the bottom of my flask. And in real life, this is going to look like a sort of crusty white, white powder that's on the bottom here. I can open up the flask, and if I really want to keep this, I can scrape it out. There's my salt in one hand, and now here's my glass of water in the other. We can use distillation to separate other types of mixtures too. It doesn't have to just be salt and water or sugar and water. We can also use distillation to separate a mixture of liquids. I'll talk about that in the next video called Distilling Liquids.